here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at this month's Smart Art Box. I love getting these because it's like getting a little present in the mail and I always feel so free to use the supplies that come in here without um, without anything in mind because I just it's just fun to try something different and to kind of get out of a creative rut, I think. So this month we have a brochure with a, some artwork from Pablo Picasso and um, the brochure of course goes over all of the products that we get in the box, but I don't wanna, um, I, I don't wanna spoil it yet. And the project here is um, to do a drawing of a guitar inspired by Picasso's Blue Period. And um, that's great because you've got a project here and then we're gonna do something different with the supplies so that you'll have two projects if you happen to be a Smart Art subscriber or you can use whatever materials you have on hand. So this kit is a marker kit and uh, we get a set of 15 Stablo pens these are water-based, I believe, so you could use these and go, then go over them with alcohol pens and it shouldn't feather the ink. A lot of adult coloring book uh, users like to use these because they have such fine tips and they've got great um, vivid colors that don't feather and I actually don't have any of these so I'm kind of excited to try these out. We're going to be using these to sketch with. And then we have a pack of five shades of blue. Um, these are the sea or maritime set, so you've got a couple um, blues that are kind of turquoisey. You've got a couple that are kind of grayish, slaty blue, and you got like a navy blue here. So we've got some good, um, good blue choices here. And uh, we've got a couple blending pens, which are really handy. You can actually use these alcohol blending markers to gently blend together colored pencil too. So if you have your colored pencils from the colored pencil kit, you can actually, um, I would probably save one pen, maybe put a little piece of tape on it so you know which one it is and use that one for pencils because eventually if you do use these for pencils, they will kind of pick up a lot of the wax and they could eventually clog. Um, but you got two, so you can use one for markers and one for, one for pencils. And last but not least, we have a pen and ink sketchbook, uh, which I'm kind of excited about because I've been loving sketchbooks lately. I just find that um, I it's so compact. I can make lots of art, but yet it doesn't take up a lot of space. I don't have to have space to store it. So I've been loving the little sketchbooks that come in my smart art kits. For whatever reason, I don't usually go and buy sketchbooks. So, um, so having this like stash of sketchbooks from Smart Art has been really awesome with the kit. I love the feeling of the cover. It's kind of slightly padded. It's got the little strap to keep it shut. And uh, we're gonna see how this works today. I thought since we have a nice selection of blue, um, blue items that we could do a blue jay. So what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little bit and we're gonna sketch with these markers here. Okay, I've zoomed in, and since I'm working on the first page in the sketchbook, what I did, I'm just going to slide this over. I put a, just a watercolor palette to set down on here and hold this open for me. You could use anything like a book or whatever you have to hold your sketchbook open. We're going to start, start using this peach colored pen, mainly because um, I think it's going to show up enough for you to see, but it's not going to... Um, I don't think it's going to affect the final design. Actually, you know what? Let's use gray because there's a lot of gray in this blue jay. So let's start off with gray. Changed my mind already. We're going to start off with an oval shape to represent the body. And we want this kind of in the middle of the paper. Probably not taking up more than a third of the space, though. Okay, yeah, that shows up all right. Then we're going to get the tail, which is going to be at a little bit of an angle. You've got to think of balance when you're sketching things. So I'm going to get this tail in like that. And then the head is going to be kind of looking that way a little bit. So we've got, we've got the head in kind of like that. I'm going to move the shoulder up a little bit, get that gesture in there. And then we want to get the beak. I really feel like I want a little bit more of a attitude on this bird. So you get that little bit back there. Get that shoulder out there a little bit more. And oh, you got a leg coming out over here. The branch that he's on. Get the eye in there. Basically, I'm just, uh, I'm sketching pretty lightly. I don't want to worry about erasing anything because I'm going to be going over with the darker pens. So, um, so I don't feel like I have to really worry too much about erasing. If you wanted to do this with a pencil, you can, but I think there's something extremely freeing about just charging right ahead with your markers. Okay, so this part here is kind of, is the back, and then you get the wings that kind of cross over each other, and get that pattern sketched in a little bit. 
sketch that down there with these beautiful long tail feathers are so pretty if you ever see the blue jay we get a lot of blue jays around here in maine and um and they often will shed a feather or two and it's this is really they're very shimmery and pretty to look at look at this uh neck area looks kind of grumpy but blue jays are kind of grumpy if you've ever had blue jays around your house they kind of squawk in there they have a lot of attitude <laughs> so i think it's about it's about fair uh, now i want to break into these markers um i'm really curious as this is a pen and ink paper but i'm wondering how it's going to do with markers it's extremely thin um perhaps i should put a piece of paper in between but i'm not going to because sometimes i'll take like the ghost like that whatever bleed through is is there and i'll use it for another paint another picture to kind of be a jump start something about a white piece of paper that can be intimidating but yet a smudgy old paper is not and there was an artist Joanne Moreau, uh, French, I believe, he would, uh, he would take like the wrapping, the meat wrappings when his wife would go grocery shopping and he would take the meat wrappings and he would um, smear it on his canvas before he started painting because he didn't like to look at a, at a uh, canvas. So here we've got a brush end on this end and we've got a bullet tip on that end. So I'm going to start right, starting with a brush tip and I am going to um, block in some of these colors. So it's not making the gray underneath feather, which is nice. These markers feel nice and juicy. I'm filling in this area here because I know that it is, um, it's all fairly gray in here, that kind of light blue gray color. I'm gonna get that up here as well. We'll be putting some black in at the end with the pens once we're pretty sure of everything that we're gonna put in here. And uh, if I didn't mention it before, I will link the uh, the reference photo in the video description, just so you have that. And I feel like that goes over there a little bit more, that gray, because we're seeing a little bit of the side over here. All right, now we need to get in a brighter color, I think, just so we can map things out a little bit better. I'm going to try this one right here. This is B, oh, the one I just used, by the way, it was the latest one, B1. This is B14, so it's going to be quite a bit darker. So I see... The, the, uh, the, there's a gray rim on the marker on the fine tip edge and the bullet tip edge does not have that. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of that up here because we do have a little bit of blue. Now this is a little bit more turquoisey than the blue that is, um, that is on the blue jay, but I think that's all right. As long as you have your values right, I think you're going to be all right. And I'm sketching. I'm, I mean, this is not a final work of art. This is this is a sketch. And if I decided that I wanted to do a painting with it, I could always trace it um, onto a, a better quality of paper. I do have some areas of white that I want to reserve, so I'm just kind of sketching those little areas out. And I'm going to pull that color back up here. So I haven't had the need to blend anything yet. And over here, I'm just getting some little dashes to show those little feathers and I think the thing when you're doing markers is you want to have some confident strokes and now I'm going to go in with that dark color because I feel like I want to kind of charge charge in here with that um, that's the bold tip I still want to stick with the fine the, the brush tip I am liking the brush tip quite a bit um, I think with this, I'm going to hit the ends of some of these feathers. Maybe get the center barb on these big ones. And then I think I'll actually put the stripes. Even those stripes I'm going to go over with black. I think I'll get some of those in with the blue right off the bat. So the black won't seem quite so harsh. And maybe I won't put the black in. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. I'm just kind of dabbing these uh, these stripes on. And I think I do want... You know what? I want to see how that fine tip works because... Oh, that's a nice fine tip. So the fine tip is much firmer. So if you feel like you don't have the control that you want with the... Um, with the brush tip, go ahead and try the fine tip. And that's something that you really want to learn um, your preference when you're working with markers because 
generally your brush tips are much more expensive. So if you have a dual tip marker and one end is a brush tip, you're gonna pay probably a dollar or two more per marker than if it's a bullet tip and a chisel tip. If you don't like the brush tips as much, then why pay more? You know, learn what you like so that you can purchase things that you're gonna use. I've been decluttering my craft room and that's one of the things that I keep telling myself, it's like, if you're not gonna use it, you know, don't keep it and use that as a lesson to purchase more wisely in the future. And I like that these kits give you a little bit of a, um, kind of like an intro to different, to different uh, mediums. So before you go and spend a couple hundred dollars getting into a new thing, you can see if, if it's your cup of tea or not, you know? It's like, well, I had fun doing the encaustic project, but I'm probably not going to do, you know, I'm, I'm probably not gonna, I don't like it enough to want to invest that kind of money to really get into it. And it's glad that I'm glad that I know that before I spent, you know, a bunch of money on it. So, or you might totally find your passion, you know, and that's really awesome too. Now you want to leave a little white highlight for the eyes because you can't, um, well, I mean, you could go back in with a, like a white gel pen if you had one. There isn't one in this kit though. So I'm not going to be doing that. Um, cause I want to keep this as a project that anybody that has this kit can use. By the way, I will have all the information if you want to check out Smart Art, um, order a past box if you don't like surprises, or sign up and subscribe if you do like surprises. Um, they do ship to most countries now. They are they have uh, they're adding new destinations they ship to all the time, which is really great because I mean we in America we have great selection and we can find pretty much anything we want, but it's not the case. And in other countries things are so expensive, so. It's nice that, that they're offering it to more people. So I'll leave this leg in here too. Get the little wrist. I don't know if that's what they call it on a bird, but it's kind of what our wrist would be. Get that leg. And then just get the little kind of talons poking out the back. The other leg is hidden, so we're not gonna put that in right now. Um, I think I do want a little bit, you're not seeing as many of the feathers over here, they're overlapped. So I just want to kind of get almost, it's almost like it looks like spots because the feathers are so overlapped over here. And we only use three shades of blue and that one shade of gray. So I mean, you don't have to have a ton. I don't think I'll probably do too much blending in here just because, um, like the feathers and stuff, I kind of want them to show up really well. Um, maybe just do a little shading in here. And I just want to make sure the ends of these feathers get to be, get to show up. Because their feather, the tail kind of fans out a little bit at the bottom. I've watched enough Blue Jays squawk in my yard. <laughs> now let's see, what have we used? We, I think, I think we've used this one yet, or did we? Let's see, I think. Yes, we used that one. Maybe we've used more than I thought. Let's see what this one looks like. If you only want to put a little color, you're not sure, you can use the fine tip. And there. I really prefer using the brush end though. I just, I feel like it's so much more responsive. But I feel like I would like to do something in this area here because I don't really like my gray sketchy line. So I think that this will be a good color to kind of maybe get rid of some of that a little bit. Muscle in the back a little bit there. Maybe I'll see if I can blend that out at all with a lighter blue. I don't know if this paper is really gonna blend all that well. That's the only thing, because pen and ink Pen and ink can mean so many different things. Usually a pen and ink is you're doing like um like a waterproof pen and then you're doing a little like watercolor wash on top. So you wouldn't want your marker to blend in that situation. So I really don't think these are gonna blend all that well on this paper. So probably the blending pens you're gonna find much more useful if you're using them on a different type of paper, I imagine. We'll try it though. I'll, I'll open this up and give it a whirl but I really don't think it's gonna blend. I'll just try blending. I'll just see if it will move the ink at all. I'll just kind of go over here. Actually, no, I'll do it on the beak. 
yeah this really isn't going to affect um the markers on this type of paper but if you're using this on like a nina or uh, like a regular marker paper or a glossy paper it's going to move it a lot better um, but i just wanted to kind of give you that i just wanted to try it out and see um and see how it was so now i'm going to use these other pens to get that branch in there these are actually uh, a little more like a marker than a pen i was expecting it to be much finer tip um, and i think that's probably why i've avoided these uh, these pens in the past because I just thought they would be just more like a writing pen than a um, than an art pen but they've got a nice kind of medium tip they're kind of like the finer tip on the marker which I thought was kind of cool brown's going to warm things up so I think I might just give it a little bit of brown maybe even instead of black because um, when I mix the brown, the browns have like usually like kind of an orange undertone. When you go over a blue with a brown, and we do this in watercolor a lot, you'll see that we get kind of like, it looks like black, even though we're using a brown, we get that black look. Um, see, it looks nice and sharp, but it doesn't look like a black hole in our, in our paper. And then we can always get that black out if we feel like we just need to have a little extra emphasis somewhere. But really, values are much more important than um, than color. Anytime you're doing artwork, I think. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. Hopefully, I am succeeding. <laughs> I think it really makes those feathers uh, look more like blue jay feathers too when we get that in there. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, I like this little sketchbook. I like that it will fold, hold, lay flat if I lay something on the opposite side because a lot of times on those first few pages if you try to weight something out it wants to close it the other way. Um, so this is nice. I don't have a marker sketchbook. I, I mean I'll use my markers and whatever but I think this is going to be really kind of nice nice to have. Maybe I'll try that gray one again but with uh, a little bit more purpose as far as using a shading and getting the, the direction of those feathers. A little bit better there. I think it's just kind of having those that those directional lines really, really help a lot. And I could even go in with more shades of blue that I have in these markers because it, the fact that they don't affect each other and you can keep a crisp line is is kind of cool. Now, if you wanted to seriously get into alcohol markers, you would want several shades of each color for maximum blending. I think that's probably why they gave you a bunch of shades of blue instead of just giving you a bunch of random colors, like primary colors, because it'd be very difficult to blend and mix if you wanted to. So keep that in mind. Um, and you know, you can build your stash slowly over time and you can mix and match brands. So you could use this brand with Copics and Prismacolors and Bic Markets and Sharpies and all those brands and still, um, and still have a really great, great collection that'll work with one another. I do have a whole alcohol marker playlist too. If you just need some more tutorials on coloring or blending, uh, trying different papers and, and whatnot. So you can refer to that if you need to. I didn't use any black on this, but I'm really happy with the way it looks. And I hope you give this a try. Um, of course, real time, you can totally sketch this, but uh, take your time if you want to. And if you don't feel confident um, just going on and sketching what you could do, because this is nice thin paper, I really think you could print off the reference photo, um, just print it so it will fit, slide it under the paper, and then trace it and color it that way. That's a great way to learn. There's nothing wrong with that because it is a learning tool. If you would like to get this box or any other Smart Art Box, subscribe. Get a surprise every month in your mailbox. Check out smartartbox.com. I thank them for supporting the Frugal Crafters YouTube channel. They are a wonderful outfit. And uh, I always get a kick out of what shows up in my mailbox every month. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give this a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you have anyone that would be interested in this little tutorial. And until next time, happy crafting.